In this lesson, we'll learn how to create a continuous border design using the designs in the November Birth Month Flower of the Year series. We'll be recreating the pillow wrap shown here, which uses the single chrysanthemum redwork design stitched in soft light brand, soft gold metallic thread on ivory silk dupioni. These wraps are easy to make and are great for quick redecorating or gifts. Full instructions along with the designs are included with the November 2014 Echidna Pie Project available to Echidna Platinum members. To make the border design on this wrap, you'll need a few things. First of all, you'll need some embroidery software, and I'm using Embrillion's Essentials. You can download a free demo from this link, tinyearl.com slash 101 Many programs can create evenly spaced designs for you fairly automatically like we used in our border, but you really need to know how many motifs you're going to use and what the spacing you'd like to have in between. And we really don't know that at this point. All we really know is the dimensions of our pillow. So I'm going to show you how to work when you don't know the other two numbers. So if you have any sort of customizing software that has align and distribute functions, and the ability to create designs larger than your sewing field, you should be able to do this. It'll be very similar to what I'll show you in Embrilliance. You also need a design, and as I mentioned earlier, this design is the single red work flower, the mum, from the November birth month flowers of the year by me at Lindy G Embroidery. Now it is included along with the applique designs and all the instructions with the November Echidna Pie Project, but you do have to be a Platinum member to get that. And to sign up for Platinum Club, go to this link, echidnaclub.com.au slash shop slash echidna dash platinum dash club. And you can sign up to become a member and you'll get a big discount on this and this is an exclusive project to them. You can get the designs also from Echidna or from me. So those are your two choices. So let's take a look at what the overall process is. First we're going to create a custom hoop and what that will do is just give us a reference for creating our design. We're going to create it as big as our wrap and it doesn't matter that we can't sew that big, it's just a reference. Then we're going to merge in a design and this is just the design that we'll be using. We're only going to use one design in here. Then we'll copy, paste, mirror, and arrange it so that we've got one repeat. The next step is we're going to duplicate that repeat to fill our entire hoop. Then we'll align and distribute the design so they're all perfectly straight and they're evenly distributed so the space is the same between each one. Next we'll add and arrange registration stitches. Registration stitches are going to be what tells us how to stitch it so that it looks like exactly what we have on our screen. Then we're going to extract hoop sized repeats. So obviously unless you're working on a very small pillow you are not going to be able to stitch this whole big thing in one hooping. So you're going to have to figure out what hoop is the best and I cover more about that in the instructions. I've already launched in Brilliance. I have a new blank document ready to build my design. So the first thing we need to do is to create a custom hoop. And to do that we go to Preferences and in the hoop section under Environment you'll see all the hoops by format. And it really doesn't matter where you create your custom hoop because these hoops are just a reference. They're a visual reference only. They don't affect how your design gets saved. They don't restrict the design and say, oh, you can't save that because it doesn't go with this machine. Nothing like that. It's just a visual reference. So we'll click New. I'll call my Pillow Project. And you'll notice that my measurements are in millimeters. So my pillow wrap is about six inches wide and the diameter of my pillow is 33 and a half inches. So I need to convert that to millimeters and there are websites that will do that easily for you if you just search inches to millimeters. It's real easy that way. So we'll just enter those values. I'll slide down, find my new hoop, click OK, and there you can see part of the hoop, but we need to zoom out to really see it. And there's my hoop. Now if you zoom out and you don't see a hoop, Go up here to the View menu and make sure there's a check mark in front of Draw Hoop. If there isn't, just click on it and then your hoop will be displayed. 
Next I'll bring in my design. So I'll go to Merge a Stitch File, scroll down to where my designs are. These are the designs that are with the collection, and this is the design I want to use. So I'll select it, import it, it pops right into the center of my hoop. I'll move it to the top of my hoop, copy, paste. You can see that I have two of them here in the objects pane. So the second one was just stacked on top. Drag it down, mirror it. And there are my two designs that will be my repeat. So select all, copy, paste, drag, paste, drag, paste, and drag. So I just want to make sure that the top and the bottom one are where I want the position to be. And then I'll select them all and I will center them. And then I'll distribute them to make sure the spacing is all even. And so what I want to select here is center and spacing and click apply. So now they're all evenly distributed and they're all centered. The next thing we need to do is to add in some registration stitches. That's what's going to help us align these when we start sewing them because I don't know about you, but I don't have a hoop that's big enough to sew 35 inches of designs. So I need to split this up. And actually the hoop I'm gonna use, I will only be able to use one design at a time. I'm gonna use a continuous border hoop and two repeats is just too long for that particular hoop. So I'm just going to do one at a time. So what I like to do before I bring in those registration stitches is I like to drag out some rulers along my right and left edges. So another good thing we should do probably is save our design. So we'll um, save and I'm just going to call it Pillow Project. And we'll save it with the other PES files. Now I need to find a file that has a registration stitch in it. Unfortunately, the designs in this collection have been split up so that you can sew them in smaller hoops. The, the overall design is created for a 200 by 200 millimeter hoop, but I've split them up and put registration stitches in it. So if you don't have a hoop that big, you can still do the designs. So let's open. And we'll go down here to, I think, about number 19. Yeah, that looks right. And we'll open that. And notice that it's opened in a new window. Remember, merge brings a design into the current window. Open will open a file into a new window. So let's zoom up so we can actually see what that design looks like. And you can see that we have some Z stitches in the flower. Two Z stitches, so at the beginning, to line up to the previous one. This one is placed at the end of the design so that the next design has these two Z stitches to line up with. So what we can do is just copy and paste this one into our other design. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it in between the first and second design. And I'm going to paste it or drag it over towards the left side then I'll paste another one in, drag it over to the other side. I like to have the Z stitches as far apart as possible but within the sewing field of the design so that it doesn't add any hoop space, any unnecessary hoop space and we need to line those up. So I'll drag a selection box around those and align top. And there we go. So now I need to copy, paste, and drag those down to here in between these two designs. So I'm just putting them about halfway between the two flowers. Now I need to make sure those are lined up. So we'll drag a selection around here, align right, drag a selection around those, align left, and there we go. 
So now we have our master Z stitches in place. So now we need to get those in the same relationship to the other flowers. So what we'll do next is I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see. I'll select the two pairs of Z stitches and two flowers. Copy, paste. And remember, they just paste right on top of each other. And I need to drag those down so that they're exactly lined up over the next pair of flowers. So let's zoom up and we can use the arrow keys to kind of nudge them into place. And there we go, they're lined up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the flowers that I copied. So here we have our Z stitches for our two designs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this into a new document and then these into a new document. So I want a pair of Z stitches before the flower, then the flower, and then the Z stitches afterwards. So I'll copy these, create a new document, paste, and let's center that in the hoop. We'll zoom up. I'm going to name this one Flower 2 because remember that was the second one in our series. But before I save it, I need to do something else here. I need to make sure that these two Z stitches sew at the beginning, these sew at the end. So I've selected those top Z stitches. I'm going to right click on them in the objects pane and I'm going to say move first. And now we have two Z stitches, the flower and two Z stitches and I'm ready to save. So we'll save, I'll call that flower two. and then I'll go back to my master file, select the next two designs, copy, new, paste, center, take those top Z stitches, right click, move first, and then save. And we'll name this flower one. And there are my files, so ready to sew. Now all I have to do is get my hoop set up. And remember, I have this big hunk of hoop here. It doesn't make any difference because when I save it, it only looks at the actual design size. It, it's not taking this hoop into consideration whatsoever. So I've saved them for my format. I'll load them onto my stick, take them to my machine. And when I sew, I'll sew the first these stitches then the flower, then the last two Z stitches, and then when I hoop for the next one, I have to make sure that those first pair of Z stitches get lined up exactly over these two, and then I'm good to go. I made them a different color, so it's easy to skip. You could make them all one color if you want, but I really prefer to keep them a different color. I just sew them all in one color. If you want more instructions for this, I've written them all out in this month's Echidna Pie Project, which is the November 2014 Echidna Pie Project that's available to Echidna Platinum Club members. And you, I'll post the website here on the screen and you can go there and get it. So I hope you've enjoyed this project. Some of you will get it right away. Some of you will like to have written instructions so you can step through it as you work on your own. Go try it. It's lots of fun. This is a great way to build continuous borders that match up when you don't know what the values are between the font. You want to align them up yourself.